So, Erin, you've got your four minutes. And I'm hoping we'll keep this um, sort of a gentlemanly debate. <laughs> so vicious and, uh, yeah. I, I actually uh, was excited to come to this event tonight because I was hoping we could do a re-indoctrination of Mo. And so I really spent a lot of time and effort researching ways that I can make uh, HST and this uh, ballooning deficit situation in British Columbia and across Canada to, to speak to, to you a little bit. So. Let me know if I'm hitting the, sure. the right chord, maybe tugging on those little heart strings a little. <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, I'm sure all of you were as shocked as I was when there was an announcement that we were going to have harmonized sales tax in British Columbia. It was certainly uh, something that none of us were expecting, though I think a number of us uh, like the idea or supportive of the idea. We've seen it roll out uh, in Atlantic Canada to great effect on uh, cost for uh, consumers in, in that, those jurisdictions. Uh, we see the, the evidence in other OECD countries about the benefits of, of an HST. Where I think many of us were taken aback uh, was the sudden and shocking nature of the announcement here in, uh, in British Columbia. I'm pretty sure most of us were sitting on beaches or drinking beer or hanging out with our families and not expecting a major public policy announcement to happen at the end of uh, July, and frankly, it happened so soon after a provincial election where the topic um, was not really raised or was raised only tangentially in the category of, oh, we're not really thinking about that right now. Uh, so obviously the, the, the very quick uh, decision-making cast a, a lot of uh, fear and doubt in the minds of, uh, of people, and the government has a really tough road to hoe to now go back and explain the rationale behind it, why it makes economic sense, and, and to be able to cast what uh, we instinctively understand uh, the uh, a value added tax as being a far more beneficial in terms of productivity than an income tax or a corporate tax, both of which the provincial government has been very successful on, on bringing down in this province. And, and, and in many ways, um, Leah didn't speak to this, but in, you know, for the nature of full disclosure, I've had some involvement with the uh, the BC Liberals uh, before and after they uh, they became government. And uh, you know, there were there were many heartening things. This will be the part you don't agree with. Um, many heartening things that we saw uh, in the early <coughs> parts of their uh, first mandate: uh, a commitment to bring down small business corporate tax to zero by 2012, a commitment to bring down uh, corporate tax in general to 10 percent uh, by 2012 some of the lowest personal income tax rates in the country for people making less than $118,000 a year. All really good, positive things. And uh, a hard-won reputation as sound fiscal managers. And now I'm going to bridge into the deficit discussion because clearly um, the, the choices that had to be made uh, this spring and this summer uh, are starting to cast some doubt on, the, on, that, on that story of sound fiscal management. And it, it's, it puts the, uh, the government in a challenging position because clearly there are, there are forces beyond, uh, beyond control, uh, kind of natural gas side, general income tax and corporate tax revenues that, that were not anticipated or expected. Uh, you can just even look at what was ha what's happening in other jurisdictions in terms of budget forecasting to see how it's, uh, it's gone sideways in Alberta, it's gone sideways uh, nationally, it's gone sideways in many states in the U.S., the, uh, the forecasts even of the fall by conference board and others are, 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 have been blown out of the water. And, um, and now we're in a, we're in a situation where uh, the provincial government, and, and most thankful that for this, is incredibly flat-footed. They're, they're, they're stumbling around trying to articulate the message of sound fiscal management in a time when they have this um, unexpected, shocking, uh, two and a half billion dollar gap from where we were all expecting them to be as as recently as you know I would argue make um, so we're in the, it, it's, a, it's an interesting place for uh, conservatives in that coalition of which I count myself um, one uh, in that uh, we we we've, we worked very hard to get our province on a firm fiscal footing one could argue that uh, we're in, in better shape than most jurisdictions in North America uh, 
but we, we have some explaining to do. And that's, uh, that's going to be, I think, the tenor of the conversation in the House this fall. If, I mean, if I were the NDP, I'd, if it's like blood in the water time, it'd be like little sharks circling around, um, tearing off chunks of flesh, because it, you know, you don't, it's not often that a political party blows up the mythology on which it's, or the story on which it's founded itself. And um, we're seeing that a little bit federally, we're seeing that a little bit provincially, and it, you know, at least it makes for interesting political discourse, if nothing else. Uh, just to sum up, because I know I talked more than I thought I was going no, to talk. I'm so excited about it. Um, I, I think that those of us, and I, I suspect there are some in this room, um, who think and believe that a value-added tax is, makes the most sense for an economy, uh, who support lowered income tax and corporate taxes, and um, replacing those with consumption taxes, I think we have a responsibility to uh, support this, this tax. We might not like the way it came out, we may not like the way it's um, it's been positioned, but it, it is the right thing to do for an economy. And uh, I'm not saying that we all have to become supporters of the BC Liberals, and I'm not saying we all have to be um, putting Gordon Campbell T-shirts on. But in you know in conversations with friends and family, I've been shocked by the level of ignorance about the HST and how it works and how it's structured. And you know even if we just take those opportunities to educate if that's where your bent is. Um, I suspect it will, we'll never correct the bad politics, but we could, we can preserve the good policy. Great.